Welcome to Rock of Faith. You can watch our services live, view our church calendar with up-to-date announcements, send a prayer request to our prayer team, and watch Dan Bennett's Bible studies. All this and more at roffont.com. The link is in the video description below. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see each one here today. We say God bless you. If you're glad to be here, say amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and start our service this morning. We're going to be in um, um, verse 23 to verse 33 this morning. I'm going to ask our sister Mary Lee, would you ask the blessing on the word, please? Dear Lord, we're so grateful for the privilege to be in your house, and we thank you for what we have already experienced, the songs and the testimonies and your presence. Lord, we just ask that you bless our pastor as he breaks the bread of life and help our hearts to be open to receive. Help us to take your word home and share it with our families. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me read this to you. A very familiar passage of scripture, but I want to share some new things, I believe, this morning. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the, of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. That expression be of good cheer means to exercise courage. Exercise courage. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship, came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Amen. We're going to stop right there this morning. This is a, a beautiful um, passage of Scripture. And I wanted to bring in some of the spiritual ramifications um, that this story involves. Um, Jesus is constantly trying to teach the disciples lessons. And all of the lessons that Jesus teaches the disciples are lessons that we're going to need in this life. They're lessons that are going to make us strong. They're lessons that are going to build our courage. They're lessons that are going to teach us how to get through our problems and allow us to follow the spiritual aspect of this world. Um, so many people do not know the spiritual part of the world. They don't act upon it. They don't live it. They don't experience it. But we that are Christians should enjoy the spiritual part of this world with the help of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ himself showing us the way that we need to go. I have um, all my whole Christian life been led of the Spirit in many different ways. 
I have seen bumper stickers. I have seen billboards. I have seen expressions of things that God is speaking to me about. And it has encouraged me and let me know that he's with me. Um, um, when I go places, um, I know people don't understand these things, but they bless me. Uh, the doves around here that we have, there uh, might be one or two that are white. But most of the doves around here are gray with a white tail. And um, often I either see doves or I see feathers from doves when I'm going someplace. And it encourages me because a dove represents the Holy Spirit. And so I know that God is with me. And I do not know how to express it to other people. But um, it blesses me that God is letting me know that he's with me uh, on that particular day or that particular assignment. I may have to go pray for somebody or deal with a heart problem, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're like me, sometimes if you have a real difficult problem, you're going there wondering, I wonder how this is going to turn out today and how are we going to get through this situation and what's the issue today. But when you know that God is with you, you know that it's going to be all right. Um, the one thing you don't know is how is God going to solve it. But that's not up to me. That's up to him. And so he's the one that has to do the solving. Amen. In this, um, in this passage of Scripture, the storm represents trouble. The storm uh, that we face in life often represents difficulty and trouble. And um, in, in this story, I like it so much because Jesus literally walks on these waves that are violent. There are times in the scriptures, one where Jesus spoke to the elements and the water just laid down like glass. It was perfectly uh, uh, silent and not moving. But in this story, the wind has caused the waves to be high. And Jesus is walking on top of the water and on top of the waves. And he, he's not troubled at all. But Peter... When they finally figure out it's Jesus, um, and the disciples at first are scared to death that it's some kind of spirit, but when they figure it's, find out it's Jesus, then Peter asks, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come to thee on the water. And um, I wanted to share this morning that God wants us to learn how to do these things. And in this case, we probably won't ever have to walk on water. Hello? We probably won't ever have to walk on water. But we will have to walk through a storm. We will have to walk through difficulty. We'll have to walk through situations where the wind is boisterous or the waves are troubled, etc. And so Jesus is sharing with us that we can do this. And Peter would like to know that he can do it. What a great thing this is. I'm preaching to me today. What a great thing it is for my Savior to tell me, Jess, you can do this today. Jess, it is a storm. Yes, it's a disaster. Yes, it's difficult. But yes, you can walk on the water. Yes, you can make it to the other side. It's encouraging to me to know that Jesus is with me everywhere that I go. There is no place that I go, no situation that I face that he's not there um, with me. Amen. Now, one of the things I wanted to share this morning that I feel is significant about the Bible is that often we read scriptures that we think that are meant for sinners and they're really meant for Christians. Hello. In uh, 1 John, it says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
And we often want to say that to sinners, but it was written to the church. It was written to Christians. Amen. I'm preaching me today. Amen. In Revelation, third chapter, it says, it talks about, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, then I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. It's not talking about sinners, even though we share it with sinners, that scripture. It's written to the church, and it's written to Christians. Amen. So that means if you will open the door today to the Lord Jesus Christ, he will come in today, and he will sub with you and you with him. Amen. He's not talking about a sinner. He's talking about a saint. Amen. He will help you. Amen. In Galatians, amen, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and I always do it this way, long-suffering, amen. It's, it's a long time, amen. But it wasn't written to sinners. It was written to Christians, and it's written to encourage us that this is an the, uh, it's really fruit. It's not different fruits. It's fruit of the Spirit. And so of the Holy Spirit, these aspects belong to the Christian. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm preaching to me today. I hope I can help you. Amen. Jesus said to the disciples, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It was given to Christians, amen. In 1 Peter 2.24, it says, And by his stripes you're healed. It wasn't given to sinners. It was given to Christians, amen. Um, we could just go on and on and on about things that Jesus spoke to the disciples. Power over devils. Power over sin. Gifts of the Spirit. Uh, gifts of, of the ministry, amen. All of these things were given to the church. Uh, the gift of eternal life. All these aspects were not given to uh, sinners. It was given to the saints, the believers, for us to embrace them and to enjoy them and to be partakers with them and know that the things that Jesus wants us to have belong to us today. And, and I'm encouraged today because I realize that God has placed me on a path. I do not know what's on the path. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I just know this is the path that Jesus placed me on. And so, therefore, he's with me. The Bible says he'll never leave me or forsake me. So every time I take a step, Jesus takes one with me. Every time I go anywhere, Jesus goes there with me. Amen. Every time I have a situation, I'm not facing it alone, but God is with me and allowing me. And just like Peter, I'm able to walk on the water through my trouble to get to the other side because Jesus has promised to never leave me or forsake me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I often have thought about these things, and I do wish that I would not have trouble. I'm, I'm sure that I'm the only one. Amen. I wish I never had any trouble. I wish never, no one ever spoke bad things to me or about me. I wish I uh, had things go perfect every single day. I wish it was 72 degrees every day. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Not 102, but 72. Amen. Amen. But somehow or another, it's not that every day. I'm not saying God when it is 72. But it's not that every day. And so there are the days when it's 105. There's days when it rains. There are days when it storms. There's days as we have difficulty. Amen. And in this scripture, amen, in this passage of scripture, we see Peter, amen, facing a difficult thing. 
And now, um, as Peter is looking at Jesus, he's successful at what he's doing. He's literally walking on the water as he looks to Jesus. But as soon as he looks to the storm, just as soon as he begins to look at the difficulty, he begins to sink. Amen. There's a, there's a, a significant value in looking at Jesus. Every day we need to lift our eyes to the hills that comes our help. Amen. We need to look at Jesus in the wilderness when they were being bit by, bitten by snakes. Uh, they made a brass pole with a snake on it. And when the people looked at the brazen pole with the serpent on it, they were healed. Amen. And the more we understand about these spiritual aspects, that it's not that we don't have difficulty, but Jesus is giving us a direction on how to get through them. Amen. And that the Holy Spirit is with us and that the power of God is with us. And it will allow us to go from where we are to the place that we need to be. The Spirit of God is with us. He's not with unbelievers. He's with believers. He's not with everybody. He's with believers. Amen. In Psalm 91, it says he will take his feathers and put them over us. Amen. And protect us. Amen. And that is literally saying that the word, the promises that he's given us, he will put them over us and protect us no matter what the situation is, like a mother hen would do with her chicks. Amen. And so these things that I'm sharing this morning are really promises of God that he will never, ever change. Amen. He will never, ever draw back from the things that he said he would do, the things that he allows us to get through and and to be a part of. Amen. I'm amazed at how many church organizations have changed their tenets of faith, and they've changed their doctrines, and they've changed what they believe, and they've given up on the things that Jesus has promised them, and now they're going uh, with things that man has promised them. Um, the Bible says, cursed is the man, or cursed is the one that trusts in the arm of flesh. Amen that he will be uh, totally destroyed because man cannot help you, amen, like Jesus can help you. And you will be defeated every single time if you trust in your own ability or trust in man's ability. But when you trust in God's ability in these supernatural things, even though people call us crazy, even though people think we're, we're not very smart, and I don't know why you think Jesus is going to help you this time. But the reality of this world is there's a big section of it that is spiritual. Amen. There's promises that God has given us. Amen. There's angelic beings that are surrounding us. Amen. There's the abilities that we have that even though that we face these situations, God is going to, by his spirit, bring us through uh, a step at a time. Amen. Amen. Now, I wanted to share this about Peter because when he began to get uh, discouraged or fearful, he began to sink. And I wanted to share again, this is about Christians and not about sinners. And how many times after we've been saved, that we begin to doubt or we begin to be stressed out about situations. How many of us have gotten into trouble after we got saved? Hello. Hello. Amen. How many of us have said things we shouldn't say or done things we shouldn't do that got us into trouble? Amen. And here I think about Peter because in his life he is one that is always sticking his foot in his mouth. He's always doing something 
that gets himself into trouble. He'll say something good one time, and the next time he said something he shouldn't say. Amen. And so we find that Peter, amen, even though he's not perfect, even though he says things he shouldn't say, even though he does things he shouldn't do, thank God he has sense enough to look to Jesus and say, Jesus, Lord, save me. I'm going to raise my hand. I need Jesus to save me after I got saved. Many, many times after I've been saved, I still need to be saved again. I need help again. I need love again. I need deliverance again. I need someone to reach their hand down and pull me back up because I got myself into trouble again. Amen. I've been sharing it a lot, but this year I've had to go to the doctor several times. But the most significant one to me, the last time I went uh, to the dermatologist, I've had uh, difficulty with my skin. And um, I told the dermatologist, literally, I have not been out in the sun for at least 12 years. I mean, at least uh, that long. And the dermatologist told me, um, you did not uh, get this trouble in the last 12 years. Uh, you got into this trouble when you were a teenager and you went to the beach and you got sunburned. And the statement was, if you've gone just even five times to the beach and got sunburned severely, uh, you can have trouble as you get older. And I thought, how in the world can something that I did 50 years ago get me in trouble today? I wish I could get a witness. Amen. Some of you have been eating food you shouldn't eat, and you've been doing it for 30 years, and now you're in trouble. Hello. I know. The doctor talks to me about it all the time. You've been eating things you shouldn't eat, and now your body's telling you you shouldn't have eaten them. Amen. It's affecting your physical condition. Amen. And I find that, that things I've done even years ago affect me today. Things that, that, that I wouldn't think to have anything to do with me today are significant in the fact that they're the very reason and purpose that I have trouble today. And so now I'm looking to God and I'm praying. And as I pray, I'm asking God, Lord, I need your direction. What else did I do 50 years ago that got me into trouble? Hello. What else did I do that got, that got me into difficulty? Here, Peter, amen, is going down, amen, underneath the water because he got his focus off the Lord Jesus. And so once again, I'm reminded I need to constantly keep my focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. When I get up in the morning, I need to focus on Jesus. Amen. When I have my noon meal, I need to focus on Jesus. Amen. When I go to bed in the evening, I need to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one that wakes me up in the morning. I wish I could get a witness, amen, and, and when I lay my head on the pillow at night, he's the one that allows me to go to sleep. He takes away my anxiety when I learn to trust him, amen. I have abilities, amen. There are some statements in the Bible that are phenomenal to me. One of them is Philippians 4, and it says, don't worry about anything. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't worry about anything. 
There's another scripture that says, don't be afraid of anything. Don't have any fear or anxiety about anything. Amen. There isn't anything that's stronger than God. So therefore, because we are Christians, that we will have the victory over our problems, over our situations. Amen. We need to put to practice the promises that God has given unto us in order for us to enjoy a pleasant day to day. And don't raise your hand, but just this week, how many days did you have of anxiety? How many nights did you have that you struggled to get to sleep? It's awful quiet in this church today. Amen. How many situations have you faced that brought these difficulties when the Bible teaches us that we should apply these principles so that we do not have to struggle in life situations? It's hard for me at times to understand, though, though I cannot see Jesus, he's there. I cannot see the angel of the Lord, but he's there. And he wants me to trust in that fact that Jesus is there to help me and to protect me. Though I can't see him, I can't touch him, I can't hear him or, or experience him with my natural senses. He's there in the spiritual realm. He is. He's walking. You don't, you don't understand it. But in Revelation, I've shared it many times. In the seven golden candlesticks that Jesus walks is the seven churches. If you don't understand it, Jesus Christ himself is walking up and down the aisles of Rock of Faith this morning. He's walking through our church. He knows the condition of our church. And he knows your condition, which is even better. Amen. He knows where you're at. He knows your condition. Amen. Now, this is the thing that, for me, that I've had to learn to practice is that sometimes he doesn't show up the very uh, second that I pray. Sometimes he doesn't show up, amen, that very day that I need him, at least in my opinion. I always use the expression, yesterday would have been soon enough, amen. We could have been done with this, amen. So what I found is that God is teaching me to believe every day. I'm supposed to experience God every day, and whether I receive an answer or not, I can commune with God every single day. I can enjoy his promise every day, though I don't possess it right now, that I know one day I'm going to possess my answer to prayer. The Bible says that the God of peace shall bruise Satan and put him under your feet shortly. So I know that's where the devil's going again. It may not be today or tomorrow, but that's where he's going to end up. Amen. And he is going to be defeated Yet again, <laughs> hallelujah, I'm preaching to me today, amen. It has taken me a while to learn how to put these things into effect for me. I know they work for Sister Mary Lee. Can I get a witness, amen? And I know they work for Sister Sharon and in days past, Sister Billy and others that I've known over the years, I know they work for them, but will they work for me? Come on. I know I've seen Sister so-and-so. She gets blessed every week, amen. But here I am. It's not my father and my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And so there takes a exercise, a development, of realizing that Jesus doesn't love Sister Mary Lee any more than he loves me. Amen. And if he'll do it for her, he'll do it for me. Amen. 
And so I need to exercise that. And I need to put a smile on my face, realizing that God is with me today. Amen. He's covering me today with his promises and with his blessings. Amen. And I need to enjoy today. Amen. Some of you, I say it all the time, but y'all need to look in a mirror. Amen. Hello. (laughs) If that's a smile on your face, I can't tell it. Amen. Hello. And God, amen, brings us step by step by step by step. Now, thank God he's not like other human beings that we know. Uh, I know people, when you make a mistake, they don't ever let you forget it. I know people that remember mistakes I made 42 years ago. And they'll remind me every day they see me, hello. I wish I could get a witness, amen. They'll remind, yeah, you did this and you did that and you did the other. You said this, you said that. But thank God with Jesus, he doesn't remember everything we've done. In fact, he said when he forgave us as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, amen. So when we run into difficulty, thank God, we ran into a Savior that's merciful. Amen. The Bible says, first of all, you will have judgment without mercy if you show no mercy. It's awful quiet. And mercy rejoices against judgment. Hello. If you can remember something somebody needs or somebody did you however many years ago, whatever, if you can remember every detail, you did not forgive them. Hello. If you remember the things they did, you need to forgive them right now. I don't wait another second. You need to forgive them right now. And God will begin to show mercy to you because mercy rejoices against judgment. It rejoices against remembering a wrong done to you. Another place it said the same thing is that love does not remember a wrong done to it. It forgets it. It lets it go. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God that We're walking in a different realm. We live in in, um, a different place, a different time, and a different season, but we must practice the principles that God has given us. Amen. Now, tomorrow we're going to have an eclipse. A complete solar eclipse. And this is human nature, not God's nature. But there's a pathway where this eclipse can be seen the best. And they show it on the Weather Channel all the time. They show it going through certain places. Casper, Wyoming is a good place. Amen. However... The rooms that cost uh, $118 last night cost $1,000 tonight. Hello. Uh, uh, Automobile rental that cost a couple hundred dollars yesterday will cost you $900 to $1,000 today. Amen. And tonight and in tomorrow. I'm preaching to me. I don't know what they're going to charge for a hamburger. Can I get a witness, amen, in Casper, Wyoming? (laughs) A dollar Taco Bell is going to be $55 tomorrow. Can I get a witness, amen, in Casper, Wyoming, amen. (laughs) Human nature, take advantage, supply and demand. Hello, you can't get it anywhere else, amen. You're going to be in the right direct line of the eclipse. 
And so everything you do, airline flights, if you're going to fly to Casper, Wyoming, what was $200 yesterday is $1,000 today. Amen. If you want to go to Casper, Wyoming. I don't know. It might be even more than that. Amen. And so I, I, I wonder about people, and I realize that today I live in a different realm of people that I've ever lived in ever before. Conversations that come up today would have never come up when I was a a young boy. They wouldn't even have discussed it. It wouldn't even been a matter of consideration. And today, there are things that people are doing that are making our life more difficulty, more difficult. And, and in, it's unfortunate, but we're being, as Christians, persecuted more today than we've ever have. If we don't agree with the political viewpoint, then everybody's mad at us because we disagree with their lifestyle. And they call us bigots and everything else, but that's not what a bigot is. A bigot is someone who doesn't like you for the color of your skin. It's awful quiet. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you there are five colors of dirt in the world. Hello. White, brown, black, red, and olive. Guess where your body's going back to? According to Ecclesiastes, it's going back to the dirt. That's where he took you from. That's where he took me from. He took me out of the dust of the ground. If you don't believe me, talk to your doctor. And he'll tell you the same thing you're made out of is so as that one's made out of and that one's made out of and that one's made out of. Same same materials. I'm preaching to me. Amen. They're going to bury you in the cemetery and your body's going back to the earth and your spirit's going to God for judgment. Amen. You are just the same as the person sitting next to you. It's awful quiet. Amen. You are made of the same stuff. If they could cash you in years ago, they could. They told me how much my body was worth in science. So it was worth about $5. Amen. If they cash you in, your body's worth just as much as the person sitting next to you or behind you or in front of you. Hello. We're all made out of the same stuff. If they took us to the reclamation center, can I get a witness? They get the same thing for every one of us. Hello. (laughs) They will. We're made out of the same stuff. We belong to a living Savior. And so we need to begin to learn to, to put to practice what these promises mean to us. Amen. People are giving up on God all the time. People are drawing back from the Lord all the time. They're giving up on his promise. They're giving up on his faithfulness. They're giving up on his mercy. And they're not trusting him like they used to trust him in times past. Um, When I first started the church and and I first became a member, we had several people in the church. In fact, we might have one or two still yet today that have been through World War II and the Great Depression and many other difficulties. And they told me how they got through the Great Depression. They told me how they got through World War II, through prayer and living for God, reading the Bible. Amen. One of our missionaries of years ago, I've shared it many times, but during the Great Depression, it was hard to get food. And she had to go across town and They had gas rationing, but she was going to make this trip anyway. And she got behind a cabbage truck. And every time the cabbage truck hit a bump, a head of cabbage fell off the truck. Amen. I'm preaching to me. Amen. 
And every time that thing hit a bump, she'd get another head of cabbage, amen, threw it in the back seat. And as she drove across town, by the time she was done, her back seat was full of cabbage. Hello? Guess what she had for dinner that night? Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Had cabbage. I'll bet that's the best, best cabbage she ever ate in her entire life. Amen. If you don't have anything else, amen. Hello. I find in my diet I have to be careful because when I don't eat something for a long, long time, like for days, weeks, or months, and then I take a little taste of it, my goodness, that's the best uh, soda I ever had in my entire life. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm not supposed to have it, but it sure tastes good. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm not supposed to eat chili, but that was the best bowl of chili I've had in my entire life. Hello. Thousand milligrams of salt and enough cholesterol to choke a horse, but man, did that taste good. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> I'm preaching to me tonight, amen, or today. It's amazing the difference that something tastes when you haven't had it for a long time. And you realize that you have to not eat it, not because it tastes good, but because it's not good for you. And when you learn the difference, then you can discipline yourself to eat things that are good for you. And when I read the Bible, I realize I'm reading something that's good for me. And when I follow the instructions of it, I realize I'm doing things that are going to benefit my body, my mind, my spirit, my spiritual as well as my physical being. Amen. The Bible says that we are spirit, soul, and body. And your soul is your mind, your emotions, your intellect, and your will. I'm going to stop right here and say, do you know how many people that I have to address the issue with that they have problems with their mind, their emotions, their intellect, and their will? Those are some areas in people's life that's worth worse than any other area in their life. Some people I know worry all the time. Come on. All the time. In their emotions, any gamut from envy to jealousy to anger to whatever. I know people that ride the roller coaster, amen, of envy, jealousy, anger, etc., and they have more problems in that area of their life than they do anywhere else. Some people I know are very well disciplined at what they eat. Sometimes it's because they have uh, maybe diabetes or something else to them. But other people just eat whatever they want to eat all the time. And eventually it will catch up with you. Hello. Hello. And without the discipline, without the discipline, it's going to affect you physically. Amen. It will make a difference in your life, whether you follow the instructions that the Bible gives you or not. It makes a difference in your life. Amen. I found when I first became a Christian... And I began to apply the principles of the Bible to my life. My life became better. In the first six months of reading my Bible, I knew more about life than I did in 21 years of living it. In just six months of reading my Bible, I became a better person. Just, just a few months, really of reading my Bible, I realized the way I was living was not the way that God intended for me to live. And I mean to tell you, I had to make a lot of changes. Hello. 
Anybody in here in need to make a lot of changes or you made a lot of changes? Amen. Amen. It was work. Used, used to do and uh, things, amen, I don't do them anymore, but it took a while to quit doing them. Some of the things I would do, whether I had a temper, whether I was envious or jealous, it took a long time to get that under control. And once I finally got it under control, I became a better person because now that envy didn't bother me anymore. And the more I read the Bible and realize what Jesus did for me, I don't care what anybody else is doing. I realize that I am saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with God's good Holy Ghost and I have the gift of eternal life and I have the promises and blessings of God on my life. I don't care if you are got eight billion dollars and you live on the hill. It don't make any difference to me. I'm doing really good today. Can I get a witness? Amen. The presence of God is with me and I'm doing just fine on today. I don't need to live on the hill or drive a Rolls Royce or anything else. I'm doing good because of the promises of God and they, amen, actually possess my life. Amen. Let me share a couple more things and then we'll close in prayer. The Bible says we're spirit, soul, and body. And really our spirit is supposed to help us keep the other things in control. The spirit is what has been regenerated in your body when you got born again. Your spirit was regenerated. In other words, the Holy Spirit made your spirit brand new. Anybody get a brand new spirit when you were born again? Once you get born again, you're supposed to have that spirit that's in you now rule everything else. All your desires, all your emotions, everything else. But the problem has been we've let our flesh rule us. In Romans 8, it calls, us, calls those people carnal Christians. One place it's, it's defined as body rule Christians. Your body tells you what to do. Not your spirit, but your body. Or your emotions tell you what to do. Not your spirit man. When your spirit man tells you what to do, it always or he always or she always tells you to do something that's scriptural. And when you do things that are in line with the word of God, you always, always come out better. You're always in peace and you always live a better life. Amen. In this passage of Scripture, and we're closing, Peter learned some great lessons. None of the other disciples stepped out of the boat. Not one of them even thought about getting out of the boat. Not one of them knew what they could do with the spiritual ability they had within themselves without ever getting out of the boat. Come on. Peter wanted to know who's in him, what he can do, how he can do it. Peter wanted to experience it. Amen. And I'm telling you, you're looking at somebody that wants to experience more spiritual things so I can get through this life, this world, this situation, this, the, prom, the problems that I've had to face, and trust God beyond what I can see, feel, Touch, taste, or smell, amen. And enjoy the spiritual realm, amen. Enjoy the day-to-day, -day, no matter what my conditions are. Enjoy the fact that I'm saved. I may have more troubles than Carter has pills, but it's all right. Everything is going to be all right because Jesus lives on the inside of me. If I leave out of here today, don't, man, don't let it bother you one bit. I'm going to see the king. Amen. I've been desiring to do that for 45 years. And if I finally get to make the journey, don't mess me up. I've been working at it for 45 years. 
come on, I've had tests and trials and difficulties, and I've had to pray hour after hour after hour and read my Bible. I wish I could get a witness, amen. If I get to go, don't hold me back. I've been working on it my whole life. Hello. Amen. Someone asked me about my good friend, Brother Allen, that passed away years ago. They asked me, uh, do you miss him? I said, I do. Do you feel bad for him? I said, I don't. I don't feel bad for him. In fact, I think it's just the opposite. I think he feels bad for me. The hardest day I had, I did Pastor Rouse and Alan's funeral on the same day. And it's probably the hardest day I ever had as a pastor. And it was very difficult to let him go because he was my good friend. You don't get many friends like that in your lifetime. And it was everything I could do. I was trying to encourage people, but it was everything I could do to hold back the tears that the friendship and the days we spent together and all the things that we experienced together as Christians and friends was very difficult. Amen. But he finally made his destination. He finally made it where he wanted to be his whole entire life. And now he's in heaven and I live in Chino. Can I get a witness? I don't, I don't even, I'm not, I can't even compare heaven with Chino. Can I get a witness? Amen. If I get there, amen, and somebody wanted me to come back, you'd have to pry me off the gates of pearl with a crowbar. Can I get a witness? Amen. I ain't leaving this place. Amen. <laughs> I made it here. Don't you dare. Don't you dare send me back. Amen. Heaven is a real place, and people enjoy life there. And once you leave this place, that's going to be the best journey you'll ever make. And when they say the best is yet to come, it's really true. The best is yet out there, that one day we'll get to make that journey to go be with the Lord Jesus Christ, and it'll be the best journey we ever, ever, ever got to make. Amen. The Word of God is what has helped me to deal with problems like losing my brother Alan, like facing difficult things. I've had some days I, I, I wonder how, how in the world did I get here? I'm not like I'm causing people problems, but ends up I got a whole truckload of problems. Now, how do I get out of here? Well, all I have to do is, is remind myself that I need to go back to the Word of God and the Spirit of God and trust in them like the people that I know that came through World War II and the Great Depression and other things. They used this same book to get through it. They had children in the, in the Army or Navy or wherever in World War II. They prayed for them every day. And one day they got off the dock or got off the airplane or whatever and walked on the shore and they came back to their family because somebody was praying for them the whole time they were gone. Hello. What a wonderful blessing it's been being a Christian and learning how to apply the, the Christian principles to my life. Peter recognized the only one at least up into this point, that, that it, you could do what Jesus does. You can get to where you need to be if you'll just look at Jesus. And if you keep looking at Jesus, you'll get there. But if you look at the storm, 
Oh, amen. If you're looking at the storm, you're going down. I don't, I don't even care if you could swim really good in a storm. It's really hard to get out of that. Amen. Waves over your head. Anybody ever been at the ocean with the waves over your head? Amen. I have. We have an opportunity today. Amen. We're going to close in prayer. But I'm really thankful for people that, that are willing to take a step of faith to get out of the boat and go on their journey in faith and trust the Lord for their difficulty. I've seen people look at me and smile at me and tell me, Jess, everything's fine. I'm good. And they have like the world's worst problems. And they smile at me and tell me, no, nah, I, I got this under control. Jesus will take care of it for me. And they're not, they're not one ounce of anxiety in them at all. And they're trusting God. I could take you to people. A lot of people that have been through other things have helped me over the years. And when I used to sit down and talk to the elders and they used to tell me about going through World War II, the Great Depression, they were so poor. They had shoes with holes in them and they kept sticking cardboard and whatever they could in their shoes and they passed clothes around to each other, amen. And some of their stuff was so wore out. We, I knew a lady. She told me she had two dresses. She wore one one day and washed the other one. And while it was drying, she wore the one dress. And then she would wear the next dress that was drying the next day and put that on, and then she washed her other dress and let it dry. And she had just two dresses. And I could go all day without saying this, but how many of you ladies just have two dresses? I didn't get an amen on that one at all. Amen, not one. Amen. So it's my assumption you have more than two dresses. Hello. I'm going to get in trouble now and to go hide. Amen. It was a blessing talking to her. Very humble person. I don't know to I don't know anybody with just two dresses that would wear one one day and then wear the next same one. And guess what? After a while, people looking at you know you only have two dresses. Come on, amen. You wore that one on Monday, and then you wore the same one on Wednesday, and then you wore it on Friday. And the other one you wore Tuesday, and you wore it on Thursday, and you wore it on Saturday. Can I get a witness? Same dress. You got two dresses. We know it. We know your whole wardrobe. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's good to be in God's house today. And, and people don't understand me, and, and they may not understand my position. But I'm happy today to come to church because I didn't come here because my friends come to church. I didn't come because my family comes to church. I didn't come here because I expected great things out of people. I came here because I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I came this morning to worship Jesus as my Savior. And I came to tell him once again that I love him with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my being. And I'll be back next week because I don't come for things that are uh, monetary or any other reason. I come because I love the Lord Jesus. Best thing that ever happened to me. Thank God, amen, he's going with me. When I leave this place, he's going to go with me again. When I get in my truck, he says, well, we'll be to send two or three angels with him, amen. He needs some help, amen. Everything is going to be all right. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? We're going to pray. I hope you got something out of this today, amen. 
Father, we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus for this opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, what a great privilege it's been being your servant. What a great privilege it's been watching you do things that I just cannot do. Watching you pay bills I can't pay, heal people I can't heal, help people that I can't help. Amen. What a blessing it's been depending on you, trusting in you, believing in you, that you will provide all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for today. Lord, we're not looking at numbers. We're not looking at people. We're not looking at the things of the world. We're looking at you today. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for walking up and down the aisles of our church. Thank you that I can say every bill is paid right now today. And it didn't matter how many people came this month. It just matters that you know how to take care of business. And Lord, we give you all the glory, all the praise and the honor. And we ask these things today in your name, the name of Jesus and everyone said, Amen. Let's give him a clap offering. Amen. You can stand with me if you would, please. And I've been saying that, and everyone said amen. And I don't know why I just assumed it was in the Bible, but I've heard it all my whole life being in church. And I read Psalm 106 last week. And if you'll do, if you want to read the last verse in Psalms 106, it said, and everyone said, Amen. You go home and read it, Amen, and you'll find it says, and everyone said, Amen. So I can say that's scriptural. I've said it a million times. I didn't know it was in the Bible, but I found out it is. Amen. It's scriptural that. That that's part of the church service. Amen. Now, one more time, would you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. I love you and you can't do nothing about it. I hope you got something out of this today. I hope you got blessed. Amen. And we're going to ask our sister Mary Lee, would you dismiss us, please? Dear Lord, we've enjoyed your word tonight. It just as always. It's always new and fresh. We praise you, Lord, that you have a living word to give us every day. We pray, God, that you'll help us to remember what we learned, take us home to our families and wherever we go, that we'll show your love and bring us back again tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Greet someone and tell them you're glad they came. God bless you really good. Thank you for watching Rock of Faith. If you liked our service, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you really like our service, share it with a friend or family member. For the latest news and announcements, please go to our website, roffont.com. Our Google Calendar is on the front page. You can find the link in our video description.